AI generated content should be clearly identifiable as AI generated content if you are doing it in a legal manner right if you are yeah. trying to do something illegal then of course that's a different issue no, but if you are any legal use of AI should be clearly labeled that it is AI whether it should be visibly clearly labeled or digitally clearly labeled should it be a watermark that you can read with a you know special purpose software all of these things is It, it, this is a debate so this are all details or i think i think we we went a little bit overboard in specifying some of the details so that mm-hmm. is one part the second part of it is there are phrases like you know to the best of your ability you should verify whether something is an ai generated content or not yes it's, again it's not clear to me what is best of my ability means yeah so so those kinds of things could have been uh, you know more more precise and tightened but in principle i think we are very much in agreement with uh, what uh, what the governance guidelines says and the amendments so uh, the other part uh, on which i want to kind of you know uh, know from you more about is uh, there are two aspects one is about the regulators legislators mm-hmm. that, that we want to talk about and second is also about children and uh, i would say the cognitive abilities and the uh, the kind of concerns which people have so the first thing is like you know the guidelines emphasize the importance of regulatory capacity and technological awareness and in our own survey at igpp uh, on what indian parliaments think of ai we found a clear gap in lawmakers understanding of ai's risks and capacities how can india bridge this awareness gap among regulators and elected representatives to ensure effective oversight because they are probably the people who are making laws largely so i mean the, i think the government has already started doing some of the individual ministries have started putting in place training programs and meetings through the mission i mean the the karmayogi thing right so uh, they mm-hmm. they are also uh, ngd is starting uh, various kinds levels of awareness and training programs for you know ai uh, ai regulators and even uh, to some extent they are also giving some kind of development knowledge to some of the uh, people in the, in the uh, so that they know what the challenges of actually building this kind of solution so and we are also so from sirai we are working with meti in building a, a ai governance course for mm-hmm. ias officers and things like that so the government has already started investing not just uh, from one department but every department for example mosby has been uh, the ministry of statistics has been mm-hmm. doing this training program for more than uh, more than 2 uh, years now so a lot of their uh, uh, people uh, have been trained not just the uh, the civil services officers but uh, even the other statisticians who are working for them and uh, the cag has started a, is, is is planning to start a new course on uh, ai awareness ai education for the auditors uh, who are working for the uh, for the cag likewise uh, so the lot of work that is being done from the regulators perspective in order to improve their awareness and uh, things like that. and of course uh, uh, organizations like yours should perhaps take the lead and you know putting this kind of material together for uh, the uh, uh, parliamentarians and other lawmakers at the, both at the state and the central level and i think that is needed and of course we have to tailor it as to what is it that we exactly need to uh, 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 you know tell people at different levels right so what we need mm-hmm. to tell the regulators might be different from what we need to tell the lawmakers but yes. that's an important sector that we have to educate which is the public also it's not just the regulators and the uh, Sure. and the lawmakers who need to know but the public needs to know. for example the the legal fraternity needs to know. very mm-hmm. very important right they have need to know okay what is it that when they are talking about deep fakes right so what is it that they are talking about in terms of ai right so what kind of technology is enabled it what are the limits of it what is the maximum what i mean what are the potential challenges of it and things like that. likewise for every sector there are going to be people with legal expertise in that sector in looking at uh, you know compliance and so on and so forth in that sector so they have to look about what would ai compliance look like for that sector so all of that training has to happen and uh, in fact recently i've been talking to a couple of organizations that uh, that are planning to offer ai awareness uh, courses for senior citizens mm-hmm. because you know senior citizens are the targets of uh, a lot of scams in india yes sir. especially on the digital platforms right Okay. and now people are using ai to you know increase the power of those scams so what they what might have looked like an impossible thing earlier uh, uh, to fake now you know very easily people can fall prey to that right so now we want to actually start a you know uh, like an ai safety awareness uh, program for senior citizens mm-hmm. so likewise we we'll do the same thing for school i think for for children people have started that already mm-hmm. and uh, i think uh, but then we also have to uh, amplify it and and then do this in a much much larger scale uh, both at uh, maybe at a formal school level 
in fact yeah. we don't we don't teach uh, kids online yes. etiquette in school yeah right but that has become a huge huge component of their life you now going forward right? how to write emails what are the things that you should watch out for what what does a spam email look like what kind of safety guardrails that you should have in place when you are setting up a digital uh, uh, profile right so what are the things uh, how would you turn on and off your instagram filter right? all of yes. these i mean there's so much that kids need to be taught in terms of being safe online and we don't do that I mean, now people are starting to talk about how how can you prevent ai harms to kids but we have not done the digital uh, society harms to kids you know that we have not looked at and i think that is a far greater danger already because there's so much True. Uh, you know online predators and other things are not there than uh, than uh, AI. ai just going to amplify it. it's not like ai is creating these uh, yeah. this kind of predatory behavior so we have to this uh, i mean if you're talking about individual safety we have to do that at a much larger scale but for the uh, the regulators the lawmakers and uh, all all the civil services uh, um, organization i think uh, we have to do that and i do believe the government is very well seized on both at uh, the uh, central uh, level and also at the state government level multiple state governments have started uh, doing this kind of ai awareness programs i think uh, maybe in, in in a matter of Six to twelve months, I think we'll have a fairly more AI literate <laughs> administration administrative service. I think that's a very very good. Uh, I would say uh, what you are saying. Uh, I would say a news rather that you know you are hopeful that in next an year things would be better in terms of uh, the awareness amongst the regulators and everybody. Yeah. Uh, one important aspect, as you talked about the risks, we are talking about children particularly because you know. one of the things uh, teachers at schools higher schools and colleges are facing is that uh, even at the primary schools like you know because and it's not just ai it's largely around digital and as you said about online etiquettes and about the dangers of the digital world uh, is there something like you know because there had been some studies i can't quote anything right now because i, I don't remember it but there have been uh, conversations and people are claiming that the kind of uh, digital uh, i would say exposure we are having and with the use of ai the cognitive abilities of students particularly is is getting affected what is your view on that so like uh, affected negatively so, i would say yeah i mean see when when different kinds of technology come in right? so the human ability is going to kind of modify to accommodate what the technology can do well right mm-hmm. so for example uh, this is a thing i like to say right? so many kids nowadays can't add up a you know restaurant bill mm-hmm. unless they have a calculator so people in our generation can still do mental arithmetic right so we can at least add a, add 10 numbers and figure out uh, it's right or wrong but uh, no but the younger generation uh, children right? even though they might be great at doing even higher math right? simple things like adding numbers they still pull out a calculator right mm-hmm. or or now now with their phone they just pull out the phone yeah. and uh, now ai is getting so good you can just show the bill and ask it to verify whether the total is correct and it will verify it for right uh, so those kinds of uh, skills right they're going to kind of get that you so it doesn't mean that you you are becoming less capable you have a tool that allows you to do that so you are doing it right? so there was some study right i, I think uh, it was uh, from uh, 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 mit or some place i don't i don't remember exactly now it where it uh, uh, appeared but it actually said something like hey, we oh, we have looked at how the neurons fire in the brain and uh, we find that yeah. uh, uh the the neuronal firing is being depressed right but i don't think they they did a properly controlled study on that i mean I, there are a lot of uh, i mean mm-hmm. even not just me but even after the uh, the study was published a lot of people have actually complained about the scientific rigor of the study and so on so for i think a lot more needs to be done one of isolated studies or not uh, not enough what people have found though which is more worrying and more systematically people have found is that uh, uh, uh there are certain populations that tend to build emotional dependence on ai yes. right that is a little concerning but most of those studies have all been done in the western economy so we need to figure mm-hmm. out if similar kind of phenomenon exists in india uh, or or in a more uh, still uh, family oriented uh, society than uh, than the western individualistic society so we'll have to see if that kind of a 
phenomenon is happening in india and maybe guard against that so that is one thing that needs to be done and uh, just like we don't allow kids in very early standards to use a calculator when we are teaching them arithmetic we expect them to do pen and paper computation so that at least they understand the basics of it likewise we have to make sure that the kids are not using uh, ai at a very early age to learn about stuff which they should be doing by reading uh, uh, books and uh, you know thinking through problems and things like that so i think that is important to make sure that the early cognitive development doesn't get affected just like i mean it's not a question of ai it's like i said even yeah. arithmetic and then likewise i mean if you are doing engineering you still do carpentry and uh, other kinds of things in the, in the <laughs> college which which you are not going to use later but you need to understand True. some of the basic principles of what are what is happening there so likewise uh, i think you still have to uh, control use of ai tools early on in 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 education uh, but um, as we go along right so it, it it is going to become a point where everybody is going to use ai to help them solve their problems when they are going to go out into real life yes and to say that you will not teach you how to solve problems using ai when you are in college or when you are in school is actually doing a disservice to so we have to figure out what is the right way to teach that and not say that we won't teach it's a big challenge for teachers it is i think that reminds me i was speaking to uh, professor deepak kumar the historian of education and story mm-hmm. of science and uh, uh, he was just like you know telling us that when we were younger then you know there were things like even if even books were considered in some societies at some level kind of some insane impact because but it is similar like what book you are reading so that is that is the question which you have you have just put out and definitely technology and history and history particularly like you know tells it and uh, by training a sociologist like if you look at uh, the protestant ethics and uh, i would say the uh, the capitalism story uh, the whole thing is that because the technology has has the power to change uh, institutions even of family of society mm-hmm. of economy that has been there so mm-hmm. in that sense what kind of impacts you see maybe 20 years down the line the and I, this is more of a philosophical question like you know the uh, in terms of religion in terms of uh, society what kind of impacts you see, you see uh, would come on individuals or human as such so this is a statement somebody yeah. made in 2000 mm-hmm. right this is so this is uh, so, so this person is tom mitchell he's one of the early uh, ogs you know of uh, machine learning and ai so he's been mm-hmm. he has done a lot of contributions in one of the talks he gave he actually said this which stuck with me he said i am smarter today because of the internet mm-hmm. not because he learned more from the internet but if somebody asks you a question on a very technical topic he is able to give him an answer by looking it up in the external memory called the internet right yes. so he he says that i have become smarter because i can just go to the internet and and and, and look it up right and and the, so this is in terms of interacting with another human being right not that he has basically imbibed everything that is there in the internet in his mind but because of search engines and other things this interaction with another human being just makes him look smart so like that right so how we interact with people is just going to change because of all this availability so i don't have to worry about language anymore somebody is talking to me in say korean right i could just have this korean translation app running on the side and then i know that i'm i become multilingual i am multilingual thanks True. to ai right? even though i yeah. i can really speak only two languages uh, comfortable right but i will become I'll, I'll, I'll soon soon we are not at that soon we'll be at a point where everybody becomes multilingual thanks to ai so like that there's going to be a lot of augmentation of our capacity our ability to interact with people and our ability to you know comprehend different things like somebody was uh, again uh, saying recently they don't read i mean so this is andre karpat right so he just says i use ai to read all papers everything not just papers every document that is non trivial length right if something is like 10 pages he basically uses ai to summarize the thing for him and then uses okay. that to figure out what to read in the paper right so that you know so a lot of things how we how we consume knowledge how we communicate with people what kind of uh, you know uh, uh, online presence have we going to have all of this is going to 
get affected because of the availability of ai so having said that i should tell you that the internet the online social media things like facebook and whatsapp probably are having a bigger impact on our social structure than ai itself when because a lot of things that ai is going to do is going to be driven by these platforms and the way whatsapp is completely pervaded our life right? so in fact uh, yes. whatsapp has It become is. like the so our phones at, at least for you know the the elderly people in our family the phones have essentially become whatsapp devices yes. like they communicate to everything on whatsapp even if i want uh, my, my mother to see a video on youtube i have to send her a link on whatsapp she'll click on that and it'll open so, and she sees it so for her every app is whatsapp all the mediation is done through that so, so so things like that so social media has significantly changed our society and we have not yet woken up to it mm-hmm. social interaction see so why why do we have to worry about fake news so much because the speed at which it's not like gossip and you know fake news didn't exist 50 years ago Indeed. people used to make all kinds of stories about people it will probably stay in your local community or your local village mm-hmm. today i make up a fake story like that right with within 2 seconds it's uh, with half the population of india because of uh, the power at which whatsapp uh, sends these things i think i think we still haven't understood the impact of these technologies on how the social <laughs> fabric is changing there are people who are working in right there are people yeah. who are actually trying to understand this but we need to do that for it or more closely and then we talk about how ai is but ai will have it thank you so much sir thank you for your time